Welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Today we are celebrating Christmas in July. We so often keep the birth of Jesus confined to the Christmas season, but today we are setting it free. Join us in worshiping the Christ child, the Savior of the world. We begin with this call to worship inspired by the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Lift up your eyes then and look around. Follow the Bethlehem star wherever it leads. Take the journey that leads to the child and be overwhelmed with joy today. Let us worship the Christ child, the hope of the world. Welcome again to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church. Merry Christmas in July. As we celebrate the good news of Christmas today on a different date, may it help us to hear the Christmas story in a new way. Today, like I do almost every Sunday, I encourage you to go to our website to see all of the things that are happening at our Savior's in the coming days and weeks. There's a concert in our church parking lot this afternoon. I hope to see you there. In September, we'll be celebrating God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, which means that now is the time to order your God's Work, Our Hands t-shirt. Now is also the time to prepare our hearts to hear the good news of Christmas, even in July. One of the best moments of Christmas worship comes when we dim the lights and light our Christmas candles. So as we prepare to hear the Christmas gospel, I'm going to dim the lights. 
It won't get as dark as it usually does on Christmas Eve, but you'll get the idea. I invite you at home to turn off your lights, perhaps close the shades, and light a candle. Then you'll be welcome to sing along to the beloved Christmas tune, Silent Night. Hear now the Christmas story according to St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas. Wow. Remembering that silent night of Jesus' birth. And wasn't it just awesome to hear the children again singing? Wow. Beautiful. I admit, though, it does feel a little weird to celebrate Christmas in July. Jingle bells, white Christmas, not. But it is July 25th. How often does it happen that the last Sunday in July falls on the 25th? That can only mean Christmas in July. So what do you remember about Christmas 2020, seven months ago? Well, there's no place like home for the holidays. Home was the only place for the holidays in 2020. It was where most of us spent Christmas in December. And when you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze, last year the holidays were spent at home sweet home. And now it's July. Can you have yourselves a merry little Christmas in July? You could roast chestnuts on an open fire. I mean, why not? Jack Frost is not nipping at your nose. I love the holly jollies of Christmas in December, but they hardly ring true for me in July. And chestnuts, uh, I prefer s'mores in July. While the jingling of bells is most always music to my ears, there's no winter wonderland to walk in July. Back in December, we warmly sang, Have yourself a merry little Christmas, and let your heart be light. Next year, all our troubles will be out of sight. But wait a minute. This is the next year we sang about last December. The good wishes, the simple worry-free world and perfect home of which the Christmas songs sing tickle our toes of optimism and hope. But they all end fairly abruptly on December 26th or 27th. And then we're back to the world of our daily realities in January and February. And by July, all the good feelings of a new year have long faded into the past. And it's not because our Christmas lights and decorations are deep in storage. The reality is that we still live in a world that is bent down and broken in December and January and July. The challenges we face, the broken systems that oppress, the bad habits we can't kick all follow us like a dark cloud throughout the year. Isaiah put an exclamation point on this when he observed, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness the peoples. Indeed, 
Troubles can weigh down the strongest, and challenges still confront even the champions. One of my favorite Christmas carols is I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. It has a profound message. The context in which it was written in 1863 rings true today. The author is the famous poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The moment of his writing this Christmas poem was the Battle of Gettysburg in the Civil War. He had picked up his brother injured in the battle and carried him home. Then, while he was tending his brother's wounds on the morning of December 25th, he writes these words. I heard the bells on Christmas Day their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to all. I thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to all. Indeed, the message of peace, goodwill, and kindness resonate in every age through all Christmas songs, sacred and secular, and yet the peace of which we so universally sing reflects more the longing of our hearts and less the reality of our lives. The kindness and goodwill of which we sing with a smile in, in such, is in such drastic short supply. It was then and is now. Longfellow knew it profoundly, so he continues to write. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For us today to make any meaningful change in our world often just seems impossible. Peace seems just so far out of our reach. We lament with Longfellow, there is no peace, there is no justice. No matter how many songs are sung, or prayers prayed, or bells rung at Christmas, he continues and concludes this verse, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to all. This is the very real, challenging, and difficult reality. It is the very real world in December, January, and July. Maybe it's even a little bit clearer in July without the gift wrap that comes with Christmas in December. We're a little less inclined today to put on the holly jollies of Christmas. We're not going to put on our winter coats or snuggle around a tree tonight to renew our hopes and dreams for a better world in a new year. And yet, and yet, Christmas in July delivers good news for the world and for you and for me. The Christmas message that is good news on December 25th is good news 365 days of the year, 100% of the time, and it's good news for you today. It's good news that is not dependent on sentimental supports, even though we enjoy them in December. Good news that is just as good today, good news that is just as much news today as on Christmas Eve. And Isaiah who so clearly saw the darkness, also points to the exquisite light, the wonderful, the most amazing dawning. The first response for our most troubling questions is arise, shine, for your light has come, he says, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And again, he says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. And here it is. Into this world, Emmanuel, God is with us. Signed, sealed, and delivered in the baby of Bethlehem. Grown, served, crucified, and risen to live forever. God is with us. 
This is the reality we embrace today in the midst of all other realities that weigh upon us. This is the good news we welcome into our hearts and our lives. I am with you is God's word to you today. Not as a favorite Christmas ornament we love to bring out, but a message today, I love you more than you know, God says. I love the world I've made too, and I want you to partner with me and the whole people of the church to renew and restore to wholeness the world that I so love. I am with you, and I am calling you to join me in all the corners of pain and poverty so that lives, the lives I've created, God says, might be renewed. Emmanuel, God is with us, not to make us feel good, but to make us alive in and for the sake of the world. Light shines, not only through the dark nights of December, but through every dark night and in every challenging day in July and August and September and on. Light shines. And here's the most amazing, illuminating reality, that which we hope for, God has already done. What we long for, God has done. What is so far out of our reach, God has done. This is the gift. This is God's gift. Welcome the gift. Embrace the gift. God has reconciled the whole human family, brought peace, goodwill, restored relationships. That for which we long for, wait for, pray for, God has done. The promise is proclaimed in Longfellow's song as he continues in the final verse where he says, Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to all. And in this, the gift of Christmas, we find our calling in July. The message of Christmas, not meant to remain a warm faith and feeling within our hearts. Within the gift of Christmas is our calling. We are called today to join the mission that was revealed by the angels on the hills of Bethlehem. Christmas in July calls us to join the mission so clearly revealed in the message, peace on earth, goodwill to all. Will you join the mission today in July? Will you join in God's mission along with the whole church? Will you join the mission of repairing, restoring, and renewing our world along lines of justice, peace, and love? The question, this question, is pitched to us in another Christmas song. Maybe unlikely, but another one of my favorites by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. They say, or ask us, so this is Christmas, and what have you done? Another year over, and a new one just begun. So this is Christmas. Could this be the start of a new year in July, without wrapping paper, tinsel, and kitschy songs? Yes, this too is Christmas. This is Christmas with its fresh message of good news. This is Christmas with its renewed call to seek, to know, and to follow the Savior. Amen. I heard the bells on
kids and all kids at heart. Merry Christmas in July. I have to admit that when Pastor Dale said Merry Christmas to me when I came to church today, I wondered if I had slept for a whole bunch of months because Christmas is usually celebrated when? In December. But it's July and he said Merry Christmas. So I decided to pull out my calendar and see if it's actually July. And it is. Which got me thinking, I wonder how many days I can celebrate Christmas each year. So, let's see if you can count with me. This might take a while. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. And 65 days that we can celebrate the birth of Jesus. 365 days that we can celebrate Easter. 365 days that we can even celebrate our own birthdays because every day is a gift from God. Merry Christmas today and 365 days this year. Amen. God's light shines through the darkness to fill our lives with grace and truth. This is the good news of Christmas every day, that Christ came to show us how to live a life filled with forgiveness and love. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Loving God, we pray for your church. Bless the ministries of this congregation and community. Empower churches around the world to embrace the mission that you bestowed upon us in Jesus, to serve the poor, love our neighbors, and praise your holy name. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration to share as Jesus shared so that all people may know your loving works. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for the beauty of your creation. We embrace the long days of abundant sunshine, but also revel in the glistening of the snow and the majesty of ice-covered trees. Open our eyes to see the beauty around us and to look up and even to count the stars. May the same light that lit the sky over Bethlehem continue to shine over us even during our darkest night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all those who govern locally, nationally, and throughout the world. Cast out arrogance and corruption and selfishness and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire our leaders with vision for the common good and a commitment to ensure that all are fed and cared for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, you heal those who are sick and you bind up the brokenhearted. Attend to the cares and needs of our congregation, its members, our community, families, workplaces, all who are hurting or feel hopeless. We pray especially for those we name aloud or silently at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joyful God, your love revealed at Christmas, your goodness and grace. Shine within us always and remind us that we are your beloved children and called to join in your mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join with me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The benediction today are from the words of Howard Thurman in The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work, the work of, of Christmas, Christmas begins, begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among one another, to make music in the heart. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Make Christ known. Thanks be to God. And Merry Christmas.